Oftentimes on this journey, we can fall prey, can't we, and become a victim of making an identity out of spirituality. And this is not only harmful, but it's not actually helping our path to inner freedom at all. So in this video, if you're interested, we're gonna talk about this. So spirituality, in its most fundamental form, what is it about? It's about inner freedom, and it's about opening up inside of ourself extra ordinary, extra ordinary dimensions of life inside of us that one day we're going to have the apparatus, scientifically, to prove that are real inside of ourselves. Unfortunately, we live in a very physical world. Well, that's not unfortunate, but we just, the way that modern medicine is, is very limited, isn't it? And the way that modern science is, is quite limited. Of course, there's loads of brain boxes and all of the geniuses go into that field and that's wonderful. It's just, do we have the apparatus to be able to go a little bit deeper? And the answer is, no, not yet, but it's coming. And so we need some people to talk from their experience of what it is that they gain from the practices of yoga and meditation, which we could and maybe would call spiritual practices. But really they're not. They're very, very down to earth. It becomes spiritual when we open up extra dimensions inside of ourselves that were always there, but here for to not previously seen. See, there's me trying to get too clever for my own self. I don't even know if that made sense. <laughs> See, yoga and meditation, huh? They are freedom creating technologies, aren't they? They're inner technologies that we can use to create that inner freedom that we're wanting. And then with more freedom inside comes more freedom outside. We gain that as our success, if that's the way that we want to define success, freedom. And for me, that's how I want to define my success. How much freedom do I have in my life? How, um, how much yeah, freedom do I have to be not governed by others? And that's really important to me. And I'm sure, in fact, most of us humans, it's really, really important for us too. Because in a way, inside of ourselves, there's this little gremlin, isn't there? This little troublemaker that doesn't like to listen to authority, that doesn't want to be told what to do. And therefore, we have to become self-assured. And to do that, we have to take self-responsibility, isn't it? That's why lots of us love being in a job, because it feels secure. And it's like, you take the responsibility of you know running the business and dealing with all the stressful stuff, and I'll take a wage and I'll happily put my all into this job that I'm doing here for you for somebody else and so in that sense it can be a really scary thing to take responsibility can't it because it seems like oh my god responsibility but we can see it as a self opportunity instead i'd say that's more of a positive way to describe that word responsibility and really anyway what does responsibility mean it means my ability to respond to things in a positive way hopefully we can use our responsibility to respond to things in a negative way, but that isn't going to create freedom. Now, there are many, many scientific studies done, at least on this level, on the physical level, of what yoga and meditation can do for the body and for the mind. We would maybe include mindfulness in that because that's where it all really began in the mainstream, wasn't it? This whole idea of mindfulness came to light and now people are wanting to go deeper because they can see that it affects their sleep, their well-being, their actual physical success in real terms, in a business way, and in their relationships with people, all because they got on the mat and did a little few stretches. But it's deeper than that, isn't it? Because you can go to the local gym and go and do your yoga session there, and it's just basically stretches. There's not that extra dimension to it and then when there's that extra dimension to it well then we might call it spiritual having said that spirituality is not woo woo 
It only becomes woo-woo when we have a spiritual identity, isn't it? And when we put our identity in this whole spiritual awakening or spirituality field, then I am that and I'm going to fight for that. And it makes us a little bit like um, some of those vegans that are a bit tempestuous, you know, when, when they fight for all of their life um, for this ideal. I'm not saying they're wrong, you know, at all, um, because maybe they're not. And they're definitely right for them because what's right for them is what they'll do, isn't it? At least what they believe is right for them they'll do same with any of us any action that we do we believe we're going to get something from it even if those actions are supremely damaging like uh <laughs> going on tinder and having a one-off moment isn't it and like indulging in the various many escape mechanisms that we use but there's still a belief structure inside of ourselves that believes this is the best thing for me right now and we might not go around the streets championing these things that we might be a little bit shameful that we're doing. But nonetheless, it's the same thing. There's an identification with it. We know politics, and I never get political, and I'm not going to get political here, but politics can be, can be, very powerful. And I believe it's very necessary if done in the right way. If done in the wrong way, my word, you see the absolute destruction because of the idiocy sometimes of these individuals um, that are just seeking after power. Now, if we are seeking after power, yoga and meditation is going to completely sort you out because where's that coming from deep down? It's coming down to a subtle insecurity, isn't it? That I am not powerful inside of myself and therefore I need to control the outside world to make everybody come under my spell and under my control so that I can create the illusion that I'm powerful whilst all subtly, 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 and these people in power won't even see it inside of themselves because it's because it is subtle and requires a little bit of freedom training inside to, to see they'll be hiding that the reason they're doing this is because they're feeling that insecurity of powerlessness of helplessness so if we can get the identity out of politics too politics will begin to shift it will become more powerful now that's way too simple that's not the only answer and we're not going to go any deeper into politicizing things here but let's then link it back to spirituality or meditation or yoga if there's an identity in it it's not its purest form and i'm not here to get puritanical you know but in a way if we're not if we're if we're having an identity around it most of the practices stay mental and then we're just the same as all of the other humans in the world anyway. Just living from the mind, being a human thinking, it's just spiritually now, rather than a human being, which is that extra dimension of life that most humans are not living from, but that yoga and meditation will begin to awaken and open up inside of you should you wish to dive deeper and take up some of those practices. Here, because we're yoga purists, uh, we're not really yoga purists because we're really relaxed on it, you know, but we, we know that yoga works and therefore it's an esteemed tradition and we should use the roots from that tradition to name the things what they are. If you go to the gym, we would call this training. And so we're fine to call this kind of stuff training too, but the proper word is sadhana. We are doing our daily practice or our daily training to be able to aliven, enliven the nervous system, to be able to regulate the hormones in the system, to be able to, well, in a way, set the mind right. It's not just about a mindset thing as well. There's lots of chemical stuff, can be hormonal too, but lots of chemical stuff in the mind that's beginning to shift as soon as we're engaging in one of these practices. This is how it creates that inner freedom because you begin feeling wonderful. And when you feel wonderful, you're the best version of you possible. And that is real empowerment then you can be yourself in every single situation and not give a flying fart <laughs> what anybody else thinks. Not only that, we know, just as a side benefit, these practices are amazing for your health. So, let's take the identity out of it, isn't it? And let's just get real deep into the actual life-improving, freedom-creating technologies or techniques that these things are. And then one day we can maybe call ourselves 
enlightened. But what does it really mean to be enlightened if not to just enlighten and enliven the nervous system and free the mind from all of the crappy bondage that we're continually living in? All of these imprints that we're getting from the external world that we can change only if we get into the nervous system through these freedom technologies. If you're interested, you can sign up for the free complimentary freedom toolkit down below. And if you want as well, you're more than welcome to sign up for the freedom blueprint. This is if you want to take your journey to the next level and really begin to show yourself where you're not showing up and then begin to change that so that you can create huge amounts of success and freedom in your life. Because at the end of the day, aren't you worth it? I think so. Lots of love. Namaste.